Hey, it's Steve Gamash here with another Chef Knives to Go quick look product review. And what we're looking at this time is the uh, Tsunihisa, and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that, uh, AUS 8 or AUS 8 Guto 210mm knife. So this is a monosteel blade, so it's one piece of steel that's probably laser cut and ground to shape. Uh, the steel is what's known as uh, AUS or AUS 8, probably 8A stainless steel. He treats about 59 to 60 Rockwell on that. And uh, this is a pretty um, resilient steel. It's used in a lot of different kinds of outdoor blades as well. And so it's known to have some toughness to it. So this will be a forgiving knife. Uh, the heat treat's not super high on it. Again, it's got a little bit of resiliency to the steel itself. So, um, it, you know, I'm not going to say it's going to take a beating like a Euro Chef's knife might, but it's going to be a little more forgiving than some of the higher hardness, uh, thinner blades out there. So this depends on what your target market is and, you know, who's going to use this. But it's a very nicely made blade. Um, so don't be afraid of this steel. This might be right what you need for your particular situation or somebody if you want to gift a knife like this. Uh, the weight and dimensions can vary a little bit on knife to knife. This particular one is 173 grams or 6.1 ounces. Edge length, it's a little oversized, about 215 on the edge, so it's got some decent length to it. Just under 8.5 inches of cutting edge. Uh, overall length, uh, about 335 millimeters from the tip to the back of the handle. And thickness wise, this has a little bit of taper to it. So again, it's a nicely made knife. Uh, I got about 1.9 millimeters of thickness at the back and then about 1.7 in the middle. And then if you look, it, it, it does have kind of a taper, what we call a distal taper, where the blade thickness, the spine thickness, gradually gets smaller towards the tip. And then we've got the overall grind of the blade that flows from the spine down to the edge. And so the tip itself, it's not like super ghost skinny, but it's pretty thin. And so the performance will be good on this knife. It, that's, that's a good compromise and see how it thins out pretty much quite a bit in the front so that's going to help the performance of this tip. Um, and then here is the back shot. Not super skinny but not thick either so this will be a good balance of performance on this knife. So you retain a little bit of meat at the edge and the tip for again a little bit of robustness to it. The blade height is about 40, just around under 46 millimeters, so a good height for this size knife. And then the handle they list as red sandalwood. It's similar to a lot of handles I've been seeing on this batch of knives Mark scent. It's got kind of a reddish brown kind of appearance. You could uh, kind of a rose woody or even kind of a reddish uh, walnut kind of style to it. Uh, you've got a full stainless tang construction on this handle, uh, three stainless rivets, and what's known as an integrated bolster. It's not a pinned on bolster, but you can see an integrated bolster that flows into the blade. So very nice looking aesthetic there. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and do our beauty shot. I already got fingerprints on it. Let's see, we'll do that. It's a little trickier to do that, but we'll do that. So um, you can see the kind of finish marks on the finish go vertical, and then we've got some laser engraved kanji that's nicely done on the right side of the blade. Again, there's no layers on this, so you're not going to see any cladding. And again, I'm getting fingerprints all over it, but there's the uh, left side of the blade, no markings on that. Uh, they've done a little bit of relief at the corners of the spine and a little bit of relief in the corners of the choil. This one on the left side here could be a little bit, I think, a little bit smoother. But if you want to hit this with a little sandpaper strip, so you can clean that up pretty easily. Um, edge, um, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. The, the edge is fairly coarse in terms of the finish on it. So this will definitely take uh, a nicer edge than what's out of the box on this. It looks kind of like a fairly quick edge they threw on this. So you might want to sharpen these out of the box. Uh, what else here? Balance point. Since it's a full tang handle, uh, western handle, that balance point is going to come back a bit, but there's your balance point. And uh, so again, that's behind a pinch grip, so if I'm pinching it, uh, it'll be a little handle heavy. If I'm racket gripping it, it'll probably be a little more neutral. Let's look at the cutting board profile on this. This might be a really good knife in a professional environment just because the steel's a bit more forgiving 
it uh, does not have a, hey, look at me uh, kind of look, so it's a little more unassuming. You got some kanji on there, kind of a standard blade finish, no weird, shouldn't say weird, but no kind of eye-grabbing hammered finish and so on, if you know what I'm saying. So it's kind of a non-descript knife, but with uh, nice performance and um, you know, forgiving steel, so this will work well in a pro environment. You'll have to sharpen it a little bit more often, but... Uh...